Our opening hymn is number 180. We'll sing verses 1 and 2 as indicated in your leaflet. From the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter, and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 116, verses 1 through 3 and 10 through 17. 
and is printed in the online bulletin. We will pray the psalm together. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. A reading from the first letter of Peter. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn is number 306, Come Risen Lord and Deign to Be Our Great Guest. We'll sing verses 1 before the gospel and verse 2 following the gospel. Other while you walk along. 
They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astonished us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things, and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broken, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Say, what in the world is going on? 
This makes no sense. Emmaus may be buying a new suit or a new car or smoking more cigarettes than you really wanted to or reading a second-rate novel or maybe even writing one. Emmaus may be tuning into church on Sunday or escaping into the National Geographic channel. Emmaus is whatever we do or wherever we go to make ourselves forget that the world holds nothing sacred. That even the wisest and bravest and loveliest of things decay and die. That even the noblest ideas that humans have had, ideas about love and about freedom and justice, can be and have been twisted out of shape by selfish human beings for selfish reasons. The risen Lord meets each of us on our road to Emmaus, in the ordinary places and experiences of our lives, and in the space we go to retreat from the world when life suddenly becomes overwhelming for us. This story warns us that we just might meet Jesus in unfamiliar places, and sometimes when we least expect it. As they share in breaking bread, Cleopas and his companion discover that their traveling companion is Jesus himself. They don't plan this as a sacred moment. But in the act of sharing their bread with a stranger, they recognize the risen Lord. This story parallels our own experience of the Eucharist. We come to the Lord's table feeling angry, feeling hurt, despairing, alone, overwhelmed, frustrated, exhausted, or any one of a number of other emotions. And at this table, we come to know Jesus in the breaking of the bread. We experience the peace and the presence of the risen Christ. It's been said that true friendship begins when people share a memory. Like the two disciples who recognized Jesus in the breaking of bread, we too are bound as a church by the same memory of the risen one. In the readings, we hear the word together and then we share the bread together. God's love is both remembered and relived giving us hope, direction, and meaning as we travel our individual paths. Interestingly, as soon as these two disciples recognize Jesus, he disappears from sight. God's presence is always elusive, fleeting, dancing at the very edge of our awareness and perception. If we're honest, we must confess that the presence is never constant, never steady or predictable, but more like a cloud or a sunset or a bubble. The moment of transcendence is a transitory experience. God's faithful people perceive God's presence in fleeting moments and then in an instant, it disappears. For this reason, we learn to treasure our religious experiences in retrospect. Think back on those moments when you have encountered God. You were not aware the encounter was coming. You were paralyzed in the moment, too stunned to realize the significance. And it's only when you turn your head and look back. Oh my God. Once in a maze, the two disciples exclaim, did not our hearts burn within us? Like Moses, we usually see only the backside of God as God passes by. Like Job, we confess, look, he passes by me and I do not see him. He moves on, but I do not perceive him. One of the secrets of a vital spirituality and a sure faith is learning to appreciate the significance of meeting God in the past as well as the present. The experience of the presence of God is not a private gift. 
It's not meant for us to hide or to relish alone. Neither in the story of the empty tomb nor in the story of Emmaus do we hear the familiar command to go and tell. That's typical of other resurrection appearance scenes. Nevertheless, in both instances, the recipients of the revelation immediately and spontaneously return from their encounter and share their experience joyfully with others. He is risen. He's alive. The Lord has risen indeed. These words may seem an idle tale to others, but to those who have witnessed God's transcendent presence in their lives, they are a transforming reality. Personal encounter with Jesus is a life-changing experience. Easter is not over at sundown on Easter Day. It stretches on and out into the rest of our lives. Life will never be the same. The Lord has risen, and Jesus returns to meet us on the road to Emmaus, through the study of scripture and the breaking of bread with our fellow travelers, our hearts are strangely warmed. And we encounter the risen Jesus. How can we not go out and tell others? My friends, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. We continue with an affirmation of our faith, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now the prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for all bishops, priests, and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, 
for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray especially for Richard Booker, Jim Finnegan, Ann Kirk, Dick Kirk, Ellie Lewis, George Lewis, Dick McCoy, Sue Scott, Wilson and Joan Summers, Peggy Smith, Sally Wolf, Scotty Wyshensky. Please offer your own prayers and petitions silently or aloud. We pray for Ginny and Randy, for David and Connie. We give thanks for the gift of Jared and the gifts he brings. We pray for healing for Anne especially, for Louise. We give thanks for all of those working in grocery stores, pharmacies, and food service. We pray for all of those who are suffering from COVID and their family and friends who are supporting them. We pray for the family of Michael Walker, who died this past week. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. I have a couple of announcements to make. Uh, first of all, thank you for joining us for our, our service uh, online. Our Easter offering for CACS is a total of $9,835. We took $5,000 out of our partnerships and mission account, and the Easter offering totaled $4,835. Thank you to all who helped with this in gathering. We will be sending the check this week to CACS. Um, please continue with your pledge donations. If you mail them in, Kathy picks them up at the post office and um, records them as soon as possible. You can also switch to auto debit. There's some instructions online or you can give a call to the office and Kathy will give you a call back. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor.
continue with Eucharistic Prayer C, I invite you to participate in this spiritual communion. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust. We turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Verses 1 and 2.
Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.